Welcome to the Landa House YouTube channel. I'm Seth. This is a ram pump. It's a water pump that needs no fuel, no electricity to operate, only flowing, falling water. Basically, water comes down a pipe, enters into this side, activates this valve, which sends a pressure wave into the secondary valve, fills this pressure tank, and then sends water uphill. I'm gonna be installing this small pump today to take water from this creek and lift it up this hill to be stored in a tank later on. All right, follow along as I get this small ram pump installed. This hill right here is where I'm trying to get water to. It's about 30 feet lift from the creek down. And we've got right here is our creek. So as you can see, it doesn't drop a whole lot, but there's places like right here where it drops about three or four inches. If I move along a little bit more, you can see right here, we're dropping another three or four inches from this little spot. So my thoughts are, over the course of 200 feet, I will be able to get a drop of somewhere around three feet. And so I'll take you around there in just a moment whenever we work with the intake. But first, let's go ahead and get our black roll pipe or poly pipe unwound so that we can get that stretched out in the creek. I now have 200 feet of poly pipe laid out. I'm gonna use a barb fitting to connect these together. That's simply just going to press into position. And then I will get the other one pushed in as well. Now, sometimes it's important to use hose clamps to keep these on here, but with this half inch pump, it should be just fine using this uh, without a hose clamp. Sometimes you can use a uh, little torch to heat these up. I didn't bring mine today, so it's just a matter of pushing it. Now for my source water, I have a great pool back here, which is deep enough that I can put my intake into. Now typically I like to use a three inch pipe with a bunch of holes drilled into it and some window screen wrapped around there. I do not have any window screen, so I'm gonna try a two inch pipe today with a bunch of smaller holes drilled in. And, uh, but it would be ideal to have bigger holes and also have some window screen over this to help keep debris out. Uh, so you can see here, it's just a two inch pipe with a bunch of holes drilled in it. And on this side, it has a half inch barb fitting and that's gonna go to the other end of my poly pipe. All right, let's go ahead and get this started in here. Now the cap on this pipe is open and so I can clean out debris if it ever got stuck in here but uh, hopefully we don't have that issue. All right, there we go. That should get the water from the creek into the drive pipe. Now this area does get a little bit of flooding. So for now, I'm just gonna place a rock over on top of this. Let's put one down below and one on top to keep some of the silt out. It might be a little hard to see with the glare, but I've got a couple of rocks right down here. And I'm going to set the intake on those rocks and then on top of that I'm going to set another rock to keep this in place. It's important that the drive pipe does not have any spots that are raised up and so I need to make sure places like this are down as far as I can get it out of that uh, rock spot. I've got the intake in the water and I've got the pipe held down by some rocks for the first 20 or so feet. So now it's time to go down to the far end and pull a siphon. Now the side of the ram pump that has the brass waste valve is the drive pipe side. And that is the side that is going up to the source water. So. I'm going to remove this ball valve from the union and that will allow me to connect this barb fitting to the other end of the drive pipe. So let me go ahead and get that pressed in. 
And now I'm gonna take this and try to siphon out water from the source. So I'm gonna step down over here and uh, just suck in and it will pull water from up there. Hopefully I don't pull in any water or spiders whenever I'm doing this. All right, I believe I am lower than the source up there, at least hopefully. I'm gonna go ahead and suck in and get the water started in here. <laughs> After 10 years of working with the ram pump, I can say that priming the drive pipe is oftentimes the most time consuming of the whole project. So what I like to do is get water in the pipe and then I will hold it up a little bit and then drop it down quickly. And that will help to pull that water from the source. So you can see it's just kind of lightly flowing out here. And I'll pick it up about this high right here, wait for a second, and then drop it back down. And that will help pull the water out the source. You'll know you're making progress when you see a lot of air bubbling out of the pipe, as you can see right here. So I was trying the pickup method and set down quickly and it would not work. So I went up to the midpoint between the 100 and 200 foot mark and uh, was able to disconnect that and get the first half air free. And so now the second half is becoming air free as you can see. Now that I have full flow on the drive pipe, I'm going to close this off and then go ahead and attach the union here. Open this up and water will flow out the waste valve and we may get a little bit out the delivery over here as well. I still have some air in the line, but I've tilted the waste valve a little bit to the side so that it will close a little bit easier and that will allow this pump to continue to operate even with that air in the line. So eventually I need to get that out of there somehow and that will hopefully allow us to have the valve upright. But for the time being, let me go ahead and connect the delivery pipe going uphill, and we will see how far up this hill we can make it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and connect the delivery pipe going uphill. Now, as soon as I open the delivery pipe valve, the cycling is going to stop. Water has gone up into the pipe and has uh, bypassed the system. Uh -oh. <laughs> Found our first leak right over here. Well, there's your problem. I might just cut that piece off and uh, pull it down a bit more. Well, this is not going so well. I just found another leak right over here. So uh, that's gonna prevent the pump from working. We were trying to use old pipe that was found in the woods, but this may just have holes all on it. So it may not be usable. All right, I'll pull this down one more time and try it again. <laughs> I just pulled off those two pieces with holes and about the exact same distance away there is another one. So apparently somebody was using this as an irrigation system and put holes every five feet. So, okay, uh, let me go get some more pipe and we will continue working with this. I think what I'm gonna do is uh, put a stand pipe at the uh, 100 foot mark down there, which is gonna be a pipe that sticks up to match the source. And then I will continue this down another uh, probably 50 foot pipe to gather some more head pressure and that will significantly improve our pumping ability. I'm back out here for day number two with this ram pump. What I found out in the first day is that the pressure wave going from the pump to the source and back is too slow and I'm having to tilt this waste valve to make it work. What I'm gonna do is bring the source head pressure closer to the pump. To do that, I'm gonna install a T and a stand pipe is gonna come up here and it will be a little bit taller than the source water to essentially maintain the head pressure from the source but bring it a lot closer to the pump. That means that the pressure wave will go from the pump up the standpipe and back and it will leave the other 200 feet of pipe alone and that waste valve should cycle a lot faster and be a lot more powerful. So let's go ahead and install this standpipe. I'm going to take this T that I have and place it into my drive pipe which is now gonna be called a supply pipe because it's no longer the driving force of the ram pump, but it is supplying water to the stand pipe and drive pipe. So that's that. I'm gonna to try to use one of those 
extra pieces that we cut off earlier that was uh, full of holes and see what we can do here. And now the drive pipe is gonna be more half inch pipe. And I'll have to see, I may only need about 50 feet of this, we'll see. So a good rule of thumb is you only want to have a drive pipe that's 100 feet long or shorter. That way the pressure wave is not having to travel so long and take uh, more than a, a very short time to reach the other end and come back. So now it's time to connect the new drive pipe to the current stand pipe and supply line. So I'm going to take this end and connect it in here and that's going to allow that water to flow further down. Now that I've attached this extra piece of hose, I'm seeing a lot of air bubbles being pulled out, which means that extra drop might be pulling the air pockets that were in that first section. But one way or the other, it's gonna be nice to have this shorter drive pipe. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this connected and we will let the air pockets continue to leave this pipe. To strengthen the pressure wave, I have locked down the drive pipe with some large rocks all the way up to the stand pipe. So now the pump is cycling with a good bit of force down here. And I think I have all of the air out of the line. And you can see the cycles are happening maybe a little bit more than once per second. And that is pretty good. Now check this out. As I open the delivery pipe, you'll see a gush of water come out of here. That is the force that's gonna be taking the water uphill. So let's go ahead and connect our delivery pipe on this end over here and go uphill. Now, we'll go ahead and let this uh, cycle a while on its own. So what's happening now is I have to build up pressure in the pressure tank. And once that's been done, it will start to cycle on its own. So uh, just gonna take a few presses of the valve here to get that pressure built up enough for it to cycle there. There we go, cycling on its own. If you watch closely, you can see the stand pipe jump around as that pressure wave hits it. And I can actually tap on the pipe here and see that we've got about four feet of input head pressure to work with. And that is what's really feeding the pump down there. So if I had about two more feet of input head, then it would greatly increase the amount of flow out the top. But as it is, that's all we've got to work with and that will be sufficient. So anyway, that's how a stand pipe can look whenever you use it with the half inch ram pump. I just connected the delivery pipe going uphill. Whenever I open this valve, water is going to press in this pipe real quick and it's gonna shut off the pump. I'm gonna to have to press this valve several times until enough water has filled that pipe to maintain back pressure, just as when this uh, pressure tank was filling up. So let's go ahead and do that. Open that up, wait for a second, and now I'm going to push the waste valve. And this step right here could take anywhere from a minute to like five or ten minutes, depending on how much water needs to fill that pipe before it uh, will start on its own. So I'm just going to sit here for a moment and press this valve, and then once it has enough water in that pipe, it will start cycling on its own. As you can see, the pump is now operating on its own with the delivery valve open. So now we just need to walk up the pipe and see how far along the water has gotten. So let's do that now. I'm about midway up the hill here. And if I tap on this pipe, it is full of water here. I can move up a little bit and see if we've got water right up here. We do have water up here. Let's see where we've gotten to. I don't think we have water just there yet. No, well, let me extend this all the way out. See what we got up here at the top. The pump is way down there in the creek and I'm filling right here close to the top. That's got water in it. That's got water. This does not. So we are about right here. This is as far as our poly pipe goes up to. There we go. The water has just reached this point right here.
As you can see, the half-inch ram pump does not supply a tremendous amount of water at the top, about 200 gallons a day in this particular setup. Now, if I wanted to have more water at the top, I would use a PVC drive pipe to supply more of the pressure wave to the pump instead of being lost to bounce as it is in this poly pipe. Now, I've placed some rocks over the pipe to help lock this down, and that does help in both flood situations and to keep that bounce from occurring. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to learn more about the ram pump, I have almost 200 videos on the channel here, but also I have four different sizes for sale at landahouse.com as well as Amazon, links in the description down below. I'm Seth with Landa House, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. Okay. Good enough.